Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Roll the Waves 2 as Austria-Hungary, episode number 29. In the middle of our battle with, I mean, between one cruiser group and the other. Although I believe that we have the superior cruisers, each of these sporting 12 9-inch guns. Uh, nonetheless, the 8-8-inch uh, eight, eight gun versions, it was 8-8, eight, eight, yeah, 8-8-inch eight, eight, eight guns versions have, um, have come up a little bit ahead so far. You know, if you do the math on it, it's actually an identical number of guns, 24 for each side. But we are firing ours from one fewer ships, which actually means our accuracy should be better. Since um, the three different ships will have a slightly harder time determining which shells correspond to which ship. But I don't know how all that works under the hood of the game. As far as I know, it does have an impact. And if I was to pay like great attention, well, let's go one minute here. Well, that, that kind of shows how things have gone. I think we've started to round the corner um, in the negative direction. That we're, things are not going our way. Let me see if I can get. Oh, why? Oh, maybe it needs to run for a little bit first. Um, but this details the rate of fire and the details should eventually pop up with information about. How many, yeah, probably need a, a couple minutes before, are they not? Well, this was really not good. This is very interesting. Medusa was hit four times with our four inch guns, but our Nike was hit with the Medusa's medium guns. I don't know what that is. Catapult was hit, fire started. The Von, Cl Von Helm's Clam also took a lot of damage there. Well, it looks like only one penetrating hit. And the torpedo bombers are busy bombing our transports, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, this is probably the time when we're going to send in our... Well, let's, let's pull away. We do have good s rear super firing capabilities, so we'll take advantage of those. Narrow our profile. And then, if they choose to pursue, this is when will activate the Torpedo Squadron. So for now, I actually want to get them a little bit further away. All we need to do is make sure those transports don't sink more than, uh, sorry, those dive bombers or uh, torpedo bombers don't sink more than six transports. I think that that's the limit for success. Yeah, so we'll continue to fire here. We'll see how we do, but we're also, are we on fire? Is it showing it on fire? Must have been that the fire has been quelled. Let's take a look. It does say fire, but I don't see fire, fire in parentheses usually, somewhere down here I think, right? Usually appears, <clears throat> it doesn't look like we have a fire. So the pro maybe that just means that the catapult has, is not activated or not usable. Okay, now let's cut back. Yeah, no, we're, we're taking much more damage than we're, um, than we're giving out at this point. So, plan B, move in with the destroyers. They have a pretty darn good uh, destroyer or light cruiser escort, so this is going to be a little bit problematic. We'll start laying smoke. And we no longer are not, you know, launching torpedoes. Looks like we're going to launch torpedoes at the Thetis here. Let's uh, turn off torpedo launching. So otherwise we'll winch, waste all of our load on the wrong ones. All right, here we go. So let's let's try to get something done here. Oh, the Metternich is all by itself. The Attila is still the leader of the flotilla. That's interesting. Well, we're definitely going to get away. In fact, if Attila can start launching her torpedoes, we might as well. We might as well do this. It might have been a little bit early since the AI does react to. Well, I mean, they, they kind of do react to. The, <laughs> excuse me. To torpedo launching. Although they say they don't, but they do. Okay, so this might already be enough. Maybe the Metternich pursues. Maybe the Metternich just fires torpedoes at the Thetis. And we pull off. 
we'll also pull off deploying smoke. It should be enough for our uh, cruisers to get away. And that's really all this was for. It would have been ideal to to get a hit. Oh, look at that is very caught. Look at that little bob and weave. That is, you done it. But anyways, this was just a disengagement movement. So, mission accomplished. Unfortunately, not a success story. And and the Lord knows we're gonna need some success stories in this battle to be successful. Huh, so it said um, Nike fire extinguished, although I was under the impression that that fire wasn't even there since, you know, it was not there when I looked. Let's go down to 30. They are trying to keep up. We probably shouldn't lead them right back. <laughs> so we'll go north. And I'll take a drink. An, inter an interesting thing which we could do is we could go looking for their carrier. If we were able to sink that, that would be pretty big. So what we can do is just divide the two groups. Um, it would be very bad if our cruisers are caught. But it's possible that we will get the carrier. I'm going to move down this way. We're just... Okay. That's a light cruiser. So that's probably where they are. We don't want to go this way then. Keep pushing west, I guess. We're looking for another scouting report to tell us more. Oh, this is conflicting scouting reports. So this is actually three cruisers. This is like all of them. And yet one cruiser is going, that is the one that I will choose to pick on. And that's actually good for our destroyers to be in the way of those, um, of their cruiser force. Oh, nope, that's definitely, our scouts have got it all wrong. That's looks a little more convincing. So we'll go down south with this one. Although it could be that this is the carrier. Unlikely though, very unlikely. It's the three ships, we can see them at pretty much max range. All those things point to me that that's the group of German cruisers. So we will send our, oh, we got another report. It's ancient. We'll just delete this one. Yeah, so I think I will actually head down this way with my destroyers. Without the destroyers, the cruisers are much more vulnerable. But that's the risk we take. We need other scouting reports. We just gotta get lucky. If we pick up their carrier, then, you know, that's what luck is. <clears throat> okay, 19 PB 40 BN. Oh. Oh, they, they're attacking over here. And by the way, we even have this. This is awesome. We have 20 flying boats uh, approaching the enemy. That's very cool. Nike spots an unknown ship. That's crazy. Well, they're really pouring on the gas. If it's only one, then we're not so concerned. I'm going to keep doing a fighting retreat here. Is it just one? Like, what's our max speed? 26 on this one. 27. So we, we can manage 26, which is not very fast. I mean, 
We expect they can still go 30. Okay, we spotted another, yeah, so these are in, uh, it's probably the heavy cruisers then. We have to be careful not to bring them back to the transports. Yeah, it's definitely the, the group. So we'll just go ahead and turn around and head north, I guess. <laughs> that has a lot of ships heading our way. Okay, they've tightened up their formation though. We could go up to squad max, they're entering gun range. I think we will pursue them. I, I don't know what else to do. I think we're just sighting the same ships over and over again. We will eventually run out of real estate here. Man, it would have been so nice to catch them, but no. The other thing we could try to do is to turn around and get catch the um, catch them with the destroyers. We do see the slow creeping of nightfall, though. Yeah, we're still spotting and unspotting, I think, the same ships. Man, this is crazy. Oh my gosh! You gotta be kidding me. Oh my gosh, they want to they tease us. This is crazy. Could we have done it? Okay, well, at this point, don't expect that we're going to get any reinforcements. And I think we will head this way because there is a coastal battery. What do you have? Six inch guns? It's something. We can just hug it. Hopefully it gives us some kind of... Oh my gosh, we got him. Wait a second. Oh no. Oh, these are Germans. These are Russians. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, these are actually a whole nother cruiser group. Oh lordy. That was not expected. And honestly, not really what I wanted to see. We still have squad max at 32, which makes me think it's possible for us to launch a few torpedoes here. It is nighttime, nighttime-ish. But they won't or shouldn't let us get a chance here. So yeah, let's, let's pull away. We are going to agree to disengage both sides, it appears. Fair enough. So then we need to somehow get over to our other other folk. All right, so I think we can run it at speed again. Okay, move this way. Yeah, we're just gonna have to take this one on the chin. This is not gonna be a victory, but it will also, I don't think it'll be a bad defeat. We did take a lot more damage um, with our heavy cruisers than they did, and that should ultimately be uh, the determining factor in whether or not we got the win. Oh, so we actually got the victory, and it's, yeah, it's because of the surviving merchant ships. This saved us. No, actually, it didn't. The aircraft losses is what saved us. Well, I mean, it's a combination of the two. Ship loss differential was only 2,000. So ultimately, we only were short of like 2,000. I mean, it would have been a, a, a victory for them, but not much of one. But the other losses, really, 
3,300. I wonder how they calculate that. Well, we, we, right here. The hell? What the? They had two light carriers. Oh man, they had a that they, we were completely outnumbered here. So we lost one transport in the end. We almost sank one of their light cruisers. Probably that first German one we kept peppering. But I, like I said, I'm just happy to be making it out of it alive with all my ships. Not a bad victory. Okay, so the float plane. It's the elephant in the room. No, uh, I chose the wrong float plane last time. Actually, I had a whole like thing I wanted to say about this. Um, I get like, a, I mean, these the views for these videos are usually over a thousand, and it. Uh, like the first thing I read, I read like several comments about people who were pretty critical about me choosing the wrong float plane. I mean, it's not something I, I it was a mistake. So that that's for sure. Um, it, you know how the internet is. People are just, they don't know how to bring up things in a polite manner. I mean, not everyone, Every, some people do, but some people don't. And it, it just struck me that the vocal minority is such a huge thing, man. Because I, you know, there's over a thousand people who view this video, and 99.9% .9 of people just don't say it, don't comment about it. They suffer, you know, they they basically just let it go or whatever. And then, like, even of the people who talk about it, who like call you out on it, and you do, I, I personally, I mean, some people, I don't think like to be told about their mistakes. Um, I, I personally am not like that. I like to hear what I did wrong, and then. In this case, it's not something I can really correct. I just, you know, it was like a number blind thing. When you look at numbers, it, like in an Excel sp spreadsheet, sometimes you're you just, your brain stops processing things correctly. Anyways, long story short, um, even the people who did mention something, some of them were very, um, well, you know, they responded appropriately, I guess. They just said, hey, you made a mistake, and thank you for reporting that. Uh, so where are we in this war now? Three-way war, I mean, four-way war, really. I, I, it's not a four-way war, it's just one versus three. Against Germany and the United States, the only way this could get worse is if Germany and France came in. I don't know, I guess Italy, have I ever fought more than three people? This might be my personal, my PR, my personal record. Hmm. Now the problem is I, I just don't know how to I think that there's very little we can do strategically we're gonna kind of have to just wait things out and RNG is gonna be everything that's I guess that's the one downside it's been my much bemoaned um, thing about this game it just does so much right and it's it's so cool to play of course the one bad thing is that the, the, there's not really any operational control we don't really have any say in what happens. The battles are gen just generated. And we're, it's not like we're really positioning ships or telling them what to do. They're either on active fleet in a gigantic sea zone. Basically, like, the whole Pacific is a sea zone. It, it used to be. It's actually not, not anymore, but it's too big to have been one ever. Anyways, I mean, you have the entire northern Europe as a sea zone, right? So... We just stick ships in there and call them, hey, they're fighting somehow, they're doing active fleet. It, it's This is where like Hearts of Iron and other games like that are nice because you can support uh, actual ground operations or stuff like, you know, there's something, there's more context to the battles, which makes them more interesting. We have to invent that context ourselves. Like, why did we fight that battle in, near Iceland? I have no idea. I, um, Yep, we're outside of invasion range, so... It was to harass Ireland, I guess. I mean, we can invent some reasons, but sometimes you'll get battles that just you can't invent an intelligible reason for. Like when I was playing as Germany and the United States sailed into the Baltic. Just, you can't make any sense about that. We killed them all. <laughs> they would never have been there. Why would they be there? Let's just next turn it and see what... Oh, speaking of places people would never be, WTF, like, that's the perfect example. Why would Austria-Hungary... There's just no reason that over a month after the war has been declared by Germany and the United States, 
against Austria-Hungary. There's just no reason why, at least I, would ever commit a force to attack Russian ports. Russia is the least likely to be blockaded. They're the hardest to blockade. And it's it just, you, I, oh, okay, we could go on about it, but I think everyone understands. Unfortunately, if I don't accept this, and I, I don't know if I can or not, if I don't accept it, I'm going to be da down in victory points. I think I am going to accept it. I really wish I could look at the Almanac. What I'd like to see right now is how many ships or how many aircraft Russia has. If they have a lot of aircraft, they probably have a lot of land-based aircraft, and then this is a terrible decision because we will definitely be fighting, yeah, 230 aircraft. I like the idea of a battleship engagement, though, so you know what? We're just going to go for it. Let's go right on over to the Almanac and see how terrible of a mistake I made. Alright, so France has the most naval aircraft. Russia has 470, so that's quite a few. Actually, the weird thing is, super weird thing, is that Great Britain only has 380. And Russia also has four aircraft carriers. Well, four light aircraft carriers. Hmm. We really need our next aircraft carrier. We need it now. And I mean, it's going to be a long time. It will not make it in time for this war. That should be pretty clear to everyone. It will make it for the next one if I start building it now. But there's always this thing where, since we know it won't make it for this war, it may be better to wait and just, okay, let's get the Torpedo to, to, uh, torpedo Protection 3. We can afford, since we have to wait anyway. Okay, now this is a battleship engagement. Thank God, okay, I actually have battleships in here. I was starting to wonder. If we don't see the enemy right away, we do need to immediately steam west away from their airports. Airports, it sounds funny. Air bases. Um, okay, shoot, I forgot to set the... I will say yes. I hit space, did I? So I didn't set this. I would love to change this to something less preposterous, but that's okay. They'll just go as far as they can and come back. We'll leave it as is, it's fine. So go, flow, uh, go, Philippine scouts. I don't know where they're gonna go. We're gonna merge this way and eventually we're gonna, look at it, I mean, unless we find the enemy, we're kind of, it's hopeless for us anyway, right? We have to find the enemy because we can't fight them. Oh my God. Goodness. Okay. Oh boy. Two verse seven. Two heavy cruisers. Hmm. It may not be accurate. Oh, we already see the the, the beginnings of it. Oh man. Now four destroyers couldn't take part in the battle. That's the short range thing. Actually, that's. Is that the short range thing? I need to check my own ships. What are the ship types that I have here? I have Metternich classes and Metternich classes are, I can't remember if they're short range or not. I mean, they're in Northern Europe, so part of me thinks that they are medium range, but Anyways, that not participating in the battles is a destroyer thing where they don't participate in the battle depending on their range. Uh, this is interesting. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to deal with this. Plenty of torpedoes if we can get in range. This is probably going to be a multi-part battle as well, especially because we're already 25 minutes in. Oh man, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. I have an idea of what I want to do. I am going to reassign the destroyers. I can't? Well, I will manually reassign them to not assist the heavy cruisers. I'm going to move in with the battleships. What's their squad max? 24? Okay, they, they are not going to be able to escape, so this is problematic. Um, we will engage this first group because I'm pretty sure it's not probably a, a light cruiser of some kind 
or a destroyer. So what I'm going to do is have both destroyers, uh, both destroyer divisions escort my battleships. And I want them to drive in and hit the main force so that my cruisers can flank around and take out the, the carriers. That has some benefits. Um, when we want to retreat, we don't have to worry about being harassed by naval aircraft. That's the main uh, justification for it. So let's get uh, the battleships not to fire at this. I imagine they're going to have much better targets very soon. Okay, this is tough though. We're actually going to have to uh, do the torpedo launching strange. Okay, well that's fine. Hmm, okay, so this is... I guess what we could do is just send the battleships north, send the heavy cruisers south. Whoever gets to the light carriers destroys them. Whoever doesn't has to just play this dodging in and out of visual range game with the rest of the seven battleships. Okay, it does look like they are gonna hone in on my battleships. You guys can, once again, open fire. Um, Okay, good. I wanted to make sure we would, didn't already have a problem with our engines. Okay, we are firing at their battleships now. And our cruisers, God help them. Okay, they are firing at the light cruiser. That's what they should do. We do have some potent destroyers in the area. Ah, this is, this is suicidal, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Four of them here. All right, well, here we go. Good luck. Good luck, everybody else. All right, we just have such amazing guns on these. All right, let's get up to 22. If you guys slow down to 23. And hopefully our heavy cruisers can slip behind, which was always the, the plan. We are not fighting with the best wind conditions, but luckily for us, it's late enough in the in the war or late enough in the in the game. It shouldn't be a big deal. All right, we're getting a lot of okay. That's more cruisers, which we don't mind intercepting if it is actually just cruisers. Hmm, sec. All right, I had to take care of something. Someone, I should say. Taking care of someone. How? <laughs> that is part of the Tortuga calling right now. Um, I have a fear that this group up here is the light carriers, in which case we're uh, not getting any closer to our objective. But let's see what happens. Okay, uh, th yeah, this is a good start. I, let's first of all, let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. These are some crap dreadnoughts. Thank God. Thank you, Russia, for not disappointing me in how much your battleships are disappointing. Because that was part of what I was relying on when I committed to this. Really hoping that even with seven battleships, uh, I'm honestly. I, w I should have mentioned this in the moment, but my biggest fear when I saw seven battleships was, oh, that's a lot of battleships. I bet it's not just Russian battleships. I'm still worried about that. Yeah, I can't. I just I can't imagine every single one of their battleships is here, especially with uh, the Pacific being one of their home zones. So I imagine we are going to deal with. Probably these are the four Russian battleships, and if there are three more, it may not be, right? Could be false spotting reports, could have been heavy cruisers, could have been anything else. Could have even been light cruisers, although that's a little bit unlikely. Um, oh, another hit, too. Yeah, we might get pretty lucky here, because we're just dealing with the Russians, and generally they suck. Thankfully. Okay, the Pervinets, let's see what we got here. That is awful. It is her it's amazingly awful. Now, this is a 1921 refit. 13 and a half, I mean, that is a lot of belt armor. No ways around that. And the Poltava? 
also terrible. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that we can 2v4 these guys. The question is, what else is out there? And it's going to be crucial that we get to their light carriers and disrupt any kind of aircraft operations before they sink my battleships. So we're just going to go ahead and fight this out for now. Man, I just... I don't, these are 24,000 tons. I mean, what are, these are 45, aren't they? Yeah. I know mine, and they know me. 45,000 tons, so really, it's almost an even, actually, we might out-tonnage them. Okay, maybe not, with that 32, but one of these is less, right, 21? Okay, they have two 31s. So we don't out-tonnage them, but we almost do. I mean, it's pretty even. So you can talk about two verse four, and that's what we'll definitely report for all the media. But the reality of the situation is we are not really that much of an underdog. Now, unfortunately, there is the reality that when you take damage on two ships or any any one ship, you're taking damage on 50% of your total ships. Um, just if I hit one of their ships, even if I sink one of their ships, all I've done is eliminate one out of four. So there is this kind of like compartmentalization of damage issue in that whenever they do damage, they're damaging half of my available assets. Oh man, the Imperator Nikolai is either very slow or did not take her first hit very well. And it looks like we're again hitting the Pervinets. She has the monstrous 13 and a half inch belt but I suspect that that armor is old enough that we are probably penetrating it. In fact, let's get some information here. We are fighting at 13,700 yards. And we are penetrating up to 14 inch armor. That is modern armor, so that means for sure we are penetrating 13 and a half inches of pre-1921 armor. Also, let me adjust this slightly. I think that we're a little bit out. There it is. So this is actually fantastic. In fact, it's another very strange thing to me that they have pretty much no escorts. They're, I mean, as soon as we can do some damage and we might be able to close in for a kill. That might already be the case. In fact, I'm gonna assume it is. Panther, good luck, buddy. You're going in. So I'm going to just send the Panther, raging like a bat out of hell, in on the Imperator Nikolai. This is going to be fun. The Pervinets has taken a lot of gunfire as well. So let's go look for those light carriers. And after that... Oh. Pass through hit, terrifying for the poor panther. Um, another hit, man, the, these Russian ships are under a good amount of fire. And this, if this is the light cruiser group, light carrier group, then I'm in extremely good luck. That was two of them. Okay, they have one battleship guarding it. Okay, I'm sorry, I wasn't really paying attention here. Let's see, we landed Pervinets. Poltava took a hit last time. Um, and then Pervinets. Poltava took another 16-inch hit. So this this Poltava has actually taken a, a, a good amount of damage. It does look to me like they did send one of their battleships back as a defense mechanism against just exactly what I'm doing. So, you know, good on them. That's fantastic. And this is indeed the carrier group. We honestly are definitely not going to be able to take on a carrier even with one battleship guard in it. That is rock, paper, scissors. They win. So can we go up against this Gangoot? 18 six inch guns, although they are in casemates. What is the sea weather? Partly cloudy. If I just right click on somebody here. Weather is not causing any problems with maximum speed. And although that's a good thing, it means that their casemates probably aren't at too big of a disadvantage aiming at us. 
Well, I can always bring my cruiser up. It's kind of weird. I This is the way I want it to happen, is that the these three are the ones who help out again with the battleship, and this one helps out with the cruisers, although they are assigned to exactly the opposite groups. But that's fine. We'll, we'll make it work. Is this the moment we go in against the Gangood? I guess so. Um, they are going into the wind, so that's probably the sign that they are launching aircraft. The only hope for us is that we're moving tangentially enough <laughs> that their aircraft don't find us, but I, that's, in my experience, the AI is very good at targeting, and the enemy AI is very good at targeting. Of course, you don't see all the air, uh, the air assaults that they send and don't connect with, but 100% of the ones that I see them launch, they hit with. <laughs> okay, good. So we have actually destroyed one of the turrets that's assaulting us even better. 13-inch guns. This one only had 12-inch guns. This is the 14-inch gun one. And then the Gangoot has, also has 14-inch guns. Okay, so it is not a un completely unreasonable thing for, our, for us to want to take her out. Now, I think we just go in. So they have one Poltava. with 12 12 inch guns this is unfortunately like an amazingly good it's a quite a nice heavy slow heavy cruiser if we can get around it i think we won't have any problems sinking the carriers that's like obvious but getting around it might be a challenge honestly the better thing here i know that this is a little bit strange but i think we're going to have to use our battleships to sink everything and they are amazing battleships, so we're going to try to do it. So, I mean, I would like to go in against these carriers, but it's going to be very difficult to do. We actually landed a hit on the Poltava. Oh, nine inches of belt. I, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to do anything. This is These are deck hits, though. What's her deck armor? Two inches of armor. Oh my gosh, we might actually... No, these are pretty light guns. I doubt very much that they've been... Thousand. Wow, it's actually possible for us to be penetrating their armor. Because I believe that the armor report values you see here are based on modern armor. And what we're uh, what we're firing against is uh, not modern armor. The Poltavas are pretty old. So anyways, here's the rate of fire adjustment stuff. Tech level rate of fire mod. We have uh, deliberate fire, so I guess that's probably if they're very far away or something like that. Usually it's if you're running out of if you're running out of ammunition, I think that also triggers the deliberate fire. So you can see your final rate of fire. Um, what did I want to show with this though? I forgot. There was something in the last battle I was trying to show. But let's just keep moving on. Okay, Panther's having a hard time. Panther, we might have to just pull her off. I would love for her to have gotten in here, but. The Gangood is moving fast enough that I don't think we're going to... Oh my gosh, seven Echoes launching torpedoes. I did not realize that that is something I'm going to have to avoid, but I definitely need to avoid that. Let the battleships do their work, and you guys can finish them off. No, I, I just set them to squad max. That was a mistake. You might need to go squad max. You should deploy smoke. Don't fire to... Oh, yeah. Okay, fire torpedoes if you want. But just basically go and catch up to the other ones. Yeah, oh my gosh, the Pervnets is just getting obliterated here. And I just, from this range, we are surely penetrating 13 inches of, uh, of armor. 74. Yeah, we're penetrating like 18 inches of armor at this range. Oh, it's beautiful. Four, I mean, it's so cool to think about. Terrible, really, but also really cool to think about how... I mean, this would be an awesome spectacle to behold. Four triple turrets, all lighting up a single target and just hitting. And, oh man, it's just... They got two that are on, on fire. Well, one, uh, the Poltava's on head. I'm just not looking good. She's on fire. She's taking a lot of damage. So, Panther, we do want you to pull off because you will be much more valuable to us with your torpedoes than... Oh, crap. Rudder hit. Which way? Center. Okay, fantastic. That's we, we got very lucky. 
Um, if it was either option, I mean, if it was port, it would have been okay, but not great. And we know that there are aircraft up that these, hopefully we're just launching cap, but probably are launching not just cap. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if I like that torpedo launching here. Oh man, we're just ripping these ships apart. Poltava and, and the Poltava looks like she might even be already dead. She's got two turrets which are destroyed. Another one which is jammed. Probably, I think from a hit. Uh, she's on fire. She's on fire. And Pervinets is also being raked with 16 inch gun shells. This is glorious. Okay, there was a moment when we didn't wanna, I wasn't sure I'd be going into this and there's still plenty of time for this to work out really poorly for us given the air aircraft. But I'm, I'm pretty hopeful at this moment. So, okay. When are their aircraft going to get to us though? That's the big question. And when is the Von Helms Clams rudder going to be fixed? That's another thing. Current speed, maximum speed is still 30 though. That's fantastic. Good, good. We need them to have their speed. So Panther can just pull off, trail from a distance, at whatever her squad max is at, she actually can go 30. That's fantastic. But we have really, really ripped these battleships a new one. The only thing which we don't want to have happen after all this really successful fighting is uh, find a way to take a torpedo. That would be not good. We are already moving in the direction I want us to move. Let's read these reports again. What are they? Cruisers and destroyers should be able to handle. I don't know how to deal with this. I guess we're going to turn a little bit because I do want to turn. Okay. We're also now hitting the Kenyaz Potemkin. Well, we're doing really well. Permanent's taking another hit, Poltava taking hits. I mean, we're just lighting all of them up. Poltava. Okay, is this one taking damage? Well, she's got all of her guns. Cross deck fire. <laughs> These are old ships. She's got one of her turrets destroyed. And then the Gangoot, which we don't even know what's going on with her. Is she just really slow? No, she's 24 knots. She's, I think, the fastest out of all of them. But let me call this video to a close here. I'm gonna have to bring it to a, a bit of an early stop. Um, we'll definitely be pushing on. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get the next video up a little more quickly. Just uh, situations here. Gonna need to call this one to an early conclusion. So I'm really excited about the way this battle has gone so far. I fear horribly, dreadfully, what the retaliation will be in terms of the, the carriers. Um, hopefully, the Russians have a bunch of crap like carriers. I guess we can check on that. Okay, 18 aircraft I would be completely okay with. Six aircraft I would be extremely okay with. So these don't look like terribly, well, I mean, still, I mean, if these, if they do have three carriers here and it ends up putting up over like nearly 60 aircraft, over 50 aircraft, that would be a real problem. So we'll find out. Until the next one, thanks for watching, stay safe and take care.